Hello everybody, so I'll start uh, introducing myself. I am Lucia and I am the Head of Education at the Nutrition Collective. The uh, Nutrition Collective is um, an educational platform providing groundbreaking information for healthcare practitioners. And here we are also with some sites, so you can also see our logo. So we provide in uh, groundbreaking information like an education for healthcare professionals like we are doing uh, today. And next slide. Sorry, it's me and Karen trying to work together. As we're saying, we provide in this education and form of webinars, seminars, and in-person and virtual conferences. And we do have incredible speakers and we do talk about different topics such as gut microbiome, gut brain axis, astrobolome, all different things in between our speakers. We do have internationally uh, known speakers like Diana Minik, uh, Professor Walter Longo, Patrick Allford. Um, now I think that I also have a, quite a few more names on the slides that we have here. And um, Today, uh, we are here with Karen Ward, that it's one of our trusted speakers. And uh, she would uh, be talking about uh, how to get the client. So it would be a business masterclass. But after we finish with this masterclass, I also want to tell you a bit more about who we are and how you can get on board with the Nutrition Collective via our newsletter to know what are our next educational events or via our membership to have access to all our amazing um, uh, courses and masterclasses that we make available only for members. But now it's over to you, Karen, because we all want to know uh, about you and how we can get more clients. Hello everybody, hello America, this is so exciting. It's 6 p.m. over here in the UK. I think it's about 1 p.m. where you are. I hope you're having a good day so far. I've saved all my energy up for you this evening and we've got a jam-packed webinar full of information and resources. Now in some of the slides, there will be QR codes. Uh, don't worry if you haven't got your phone nearby or if you're not comfortable scanning QR codes, the links behind the QR codes will reach you tomorrow on an email anyway. So so today I have been invited to talk to you about where are all the clients. Now, whether you're in the US, France, Europe, UK, the challenges that we have as nutritionists are exactly the same, okay? And a lot of the issues around finding clients is knowing where to find them, but also we have an aspect where we need to be able to attract them. I like to call that magnetic marketing. So I'm doing a blend here this evening of where you can find clients, but also how to magnetically market yourself so people know how to find you and so you can attract those people to come and work with you. So we're going to cover today a bit about mindset, which is crucial for getting your business off the ground. We're going to touch on niching, six ways to find clients, and I'm going to talk to you about spinning plates and how to be prepared for inquiries. So let's get into it. I'm going to kick off with mindset, okay? When I was training as a nutritionist years ago, we had a cohort of 40 students in our class that all graduated at the same time. And very quickly, I realized that less than 20% of that class actually went on to practice and be nutritionists. And that was really sad for me to discover that. Now, before I was a nutritionist, I was a business coach, a business mentor, um, doing leadership training in the corporate world. And what I found is that I didn't have those challenges that those those nutritionists had when it came to finding clients and getting their business off the ground, because I had the knowledge and the skill set of how the human consumer mindset works. So we've got our own mindset that holds us back. And there's a lack of understanding of people's mindset and their buying behaviors and how to actually engage with them so they come on board with you.
So that's when I started coaching alongside being a nutritional therapist. I thought, you know what? These people need some help because there's so many people out in the world that need us. There is a population in America, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, of around 332 million. So you're not short on people over there that need your help. There'll be a high percentage of people that need you. And it's heartbreaking to think that people would get this amazing qualification to be able to go out and help people and then they do nothing with it. So that's why I do what I do so it's important that I start talking to you all about mindset um, and here are some challenges that I know will, that people will be struggling with if you're not currently practicing or if you're struggling to build your business and that's fear fear will kill your success and you need a plan and you need self-belief. Now, fear comes in all sorts of guises, doesn't it? You'll be familiar with uh, the fear of being judged. You know that whole, who does she think she is? Posting information on Instagram like she knows stuff, you know? You're probably sitting there thinking, oh, I don't want to put that information out there in case somebody judges me or somebody questions me or comments underneath. There's too much worry about getting it wrong. And there's not much you can get wrong, really, when it comes to nutritional therapy, because actually all we're suggesting is people upgrade their lifestyle habits, upgrade their nutrition, investigate the root cause. We've got functional testing that can do all the complicated stuff and take out the guessing. So there wouldn't really be any advice that you could get wrong. Um, and you also know the responsibility of taking a very in-depth intake anyway. You have processes to follow. But these fears stack up. So, you know, fear of failing, that's a huge one. And the imposter syndrome in your ear saying, oh, are you sure that you're good enough to do this? Are you sure you're qualified enough? You've only got 10 followers. You haven't got any experience. Those voices in our heads can take over um, and stop us from moving forward and I believe that's what happened with those people in my cohort that I trained with is that the fear got the better of them so for you to move forward to find clients we have got to put that fear to bed okay so it's very important that you embrace just being you you need to be yourself be the superhero that you are you've got all of this knowledge ready to share with the world but you need to do it in your style don't watch other nutritional therapists and what they're doing in fact if they're following you on social media and showing up in your feed regularly i would remove them off your following followers list because they could be a distraction because the comparisonitis sets in okay when you're comparing yourself to other people and before you know it you're not moving forward because you've got all those fears so definitely aim to be yourself and don't aim to be perfect we're not looking for perfection here and neither are your clients your clients want to see that you're authentic they want to see that you have the odd ice cream the odd slice of pizza that you know that you won't call them to perfection if they work with you because perfection seems like quite a high standard for them to reach so be yourself and don't aim to be perfect don't be afraid of showing any flaws and don't worry about what others think so I said a minute ago we have we have that feeling of oh they're sitting on their sofa reading my content watching what I'm doing and they're judging me you can't hear those conversations anyway. So why do you care? These conversations are taking place in your head. You can't hear them. Um, and are they, are they actually happening? Is that real? Or is that something you're telling yourself that's happening? So mindset is hugely important. Everything else I'm going to show with you on this webinar is just common sense, or maybe some tools you haven't thought about, or some strategies you haven't thought about. But unless you've got your mindset steady, none of it's going to work. So really take that away from today. OK, so I just want to touch on niching as well, because what I, I'm quite well known over here in the UK for talking about not niching. It's not something I will push. There's a lot of coaches out there that say you must niche, you must narrow down your niche. I think it's a terrible idea and I think it can destroy nutritional therapist confidence when they're looking for clients. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack if you're narrowly niching down. Niching shouldn't take place in the early stages of building business. Maybe it's something you can work towards when you've got more experience, you've got more case studies, you've found your groove, you're starting to get a feel for what cases you enjoy working with and which ones you don't enjoy working with. But niching can really stop nutritional therapists in their tracks. 
as they're starting out. You've got so much knowledge to help people for so many issues that what a shame you can't share that knowledge if you're only going to give 10% of it away. This is on my Instagram page, by the way, my face every time a nutritionist is told they must niche. I just don't agree with it. And when I tell people you don't need to niche, I feel them just exhale and relax and think, oh, thank God for that. Because it's been, I've spent six months trying to narrow down my niche and I don't know what I want to niche in. Well, just get going, just start seeing clients, help the people that you know that you can help. There are millions of people out there that need your help. Why would you wanna narrow it down to just one person in a crowd when you can help maybe 30 people in a crowd, okay? And then figure it out as you go along. So now you know how I feel about niching, I'm now gonna go on to how you can get clients, how you can find them and how you can attract them because that's what you're all here to find out about this evening. So number one, optim optimize your social media. So you may have come across a term called storytelling. If you haven't, definitely go and read into what storytelling is. Storytelling is when you can capture the imagination of that person that's reading your content and you can bring them on board on a, a virtual journey. It can be a fictional journey or you could be sharing a case study of somebody you've worked with. Every story has a hero. Every story has a problem in it. Every story has a solution and a happy ending. So um, my first piece of content that I'm going to be sharing with you outside of this presentation is a storytelling framework. Now, you can head over to my Instagram page and hit the link in my bio and you'll find it there. Or I am going to share the link that you can access that storytelling framework in the newsletter that you're going to get tomorrow. So storytelling on social media is is by far the most efficient way to get people to know, like, and trust you. When people know, like, and trust you, they're ready to buy from you, but they need to hear what you've got to say, who you help, how do you go about doing it, what success can you achieve with somebody that's experiencing a problem. Within the storytelling framework, I use a model called Problem Agitate Solution, PAS, where you identify a problem and you share it with your audience on any platform, any social media platform, maybe on your blog page, videos, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you need to. So you talk about a problem that the people you want to help are struggling with. It can be anything from constipation, skin issues, IBS, um, eczema, anything, fertility, talk about the problem and then agitate it. And when I say agitate that problem, I'm bringing in emotions. How is it disrupting their daily life? What impact is it having on them with their overall health and well-being, or even their mental health? And then you then position your solution. So a problem might be um, IBS, agitate it. The impact it's having on their daily life is that they don't want to travel too far. They don't go on days out with the children because they worry about not being near a toilet. They're having to phone in sick for work several times a month because they're in pain. And the solution would be they can come to you to iron that out, maybe through stool testing or investigating the root cause of that IBS. So storytelling and using problems that you agitate and then pitch the solution, that should be about 70% of your social media content backed up with social proof like testimonials. Um, share some behind the scenes. So going back to imperfections, and being your authentic self, make sure that you're letting people know that you're a human, that, you know, you go on day trips, um, do a, uh, a reel on Instagram, that what's in your shopping cart, what's in your cupboards, what you're having a day in the life of a nutritionist in terms of what meals you eat, what snacks are you preparing for a day out with the children? People want to know what your husband looks like, what your girlfriend looks like. Does she have any children? What's that wallpaper in her lounge? That's nice. People want to be involved in our lives because they aspire to be us they aspire to move one step closer to us they want to be invited into your world and nurtured okay so do share some of the behind the scenes content to balance out all of that other stuff that you're sharing with your storytelling and update your bio so to optimize your visibility, this ties into the next um, point that I'm going to be making about being visible, but to optimize your visibility, you need to have your bio packed out with who you are. Are you qualified? What do you do? Who do you help? So here's just a screenshot here of Ellie, the lovely Ellie Alexander, who's over here in the UK. So you can see that Ellie 
has got her face as her profile picture. So that shows the human aspect of her. Whereas over here, we've got a couple with just logos. Okay, I'll come back to that side of the page in a minute. Ellie has got her name in here and then quickly followed with her job title and some credentials that flag up that she knows what she's talking about. Okay. Underneath, you can see she hasn't narrowly niched, but she has told everybody all the reasons why they can approach her for help. And there's lots of reasons there from hormones to fertility, energy, fatigue, uh, gut health, nutrient testing. And that's great that she's mentioned testing because that further gives her credibility that she knows what she's talking about. She's got access to labs and then a call to action here to work with her online. A lot of us over here, we moved our businesses online during the pandemic and we've never gone back to face to face and it's working brilliantly. So Ellie has chosen to stay working online and the call to action is click on this link to find out how you can work with me. So ask yourself, do you have your face visible in your Instagram page? Do you have your job title very clearly listed here? Are you telling people all the reasons why they can contact you? And is there a call to action? That would be optimizing your social media bio. This is now making you attractive, magnetic marketing. We're going to attract people to come and follow you and engage with you and follow your content. Now, if you look over on the right hand side, you can see that not all of these nutritionists have optimized their bios or their information. Now, which one would you be drawn to if you were looking at a list of nutritionists? I'm not sure I'd approach Nicola. Um, I don't think I would approach somebody whose face I couldn't see, but I would definitely be drawn to this one because I don't know what those letters mean if I'm just, you know, Joe Average out in the world, but it looks serious. It looks like she's done a lot of studying for this qualification and she looks like a nice person and she's registered. I'd probably click on Ellie over the others that are listed here. Now, this is how your information appears when somebody clicks on that little button when they want to see um, who's watching their stories. So if you're watching somebody's stories on Instagram, you will appear on this list and they can see who's watched their story. And you want to stand out when people can see that little snapshot of who it is that's watched their story. So that's what I mean about optimizing your bio. We need clients to find you. This isn't all about you having boots on the ground and going out and hunting down clients. You want to be easily found. Okay. So number two, drive traffic to your website. Very, very important. Hopefully you do have a website. This is your shop uh, where people can go in and browse without feeling any pressure, have a bit of a mooch around, click on a few links, read some blogs, have a look at some testimonials, your services, and hopefully your prices are on display, which will filter out the people that uh, you know might waste your time. We call them tire kickers over here. So we don't want any tire kickers. We want people that are serious about booking a discovery call with you and having a chat. So drive traffic to your website by regularly sharing the URLs for the different pages. You can share a page that says my services or my packages and prices and share that on social media and say, I'd like to invite you to go and have a look at you know, my packages. You might have a, a new blog that you've written on your website and you'll do a post on it on social media and invite them to read the longer version on your website. Um, you might have um, a story to tell about your own health that instead of typing it all out on Instagram and running out of space, type it on your website and share that URL. So regularly share the URLs that link back to your website. We want people going to your website, not just sitting on social media platforms. Always use a call to action. So I mentioned a call to action a moment ago. Ellie had one on her Instagram bio. A call to action is an invitation. It's when you're prompting somebody to take action. So when you are publishing your social media posts or sending your newsletters out, at the bottom, and even on your blog pages, at the bottom, you need to invite them to book a call or go and read more information or go and have a look at my packages or uh, go and read this latest blog post. So never publish anything without a call to action. As silly as it sounds, that's all it takes for people to take the next step to move closer towards you. And then keep your blog page fresh. So <clears throat> we've all heard of SEO, search engine optimization. 
I don't fully understand it. Maybe you do. I don't know. But it's all about organically driving people to your website. And just a simple Google search that matches some of the words that's on your website will make you easy to find. Now, I wrote an article on our nutrition website about hair loss back in 2018, I think it was. And somebody contacted last week, contacted us last week because they did a Google search about hair loss and they came across that blog post. So keep your blog page fresh because people are Googling the words that you're using. And when I say fresh, I mean, add something at least once a month. You can go in and actually change the photos. You can change a couple of sentences, add new sentences in and take other sentences out. Just keep fiddling with it because that's going to, Google love that. They love it when they can see people are really optimizing their content and it keeps those Google searches alive. Okay, so drive traffic to your website using those three points. And then number three, here we go, visibility. This is a big one. So many, so many people are just holding back from like, oh, I don't really want to step forward. I'm not comfortable. What if I get rejected? What if I uh, get knocked back or if they laugh at me or ignore me? You know, you there are other ways to make your brand visible rather than you, you know, walking the streets and introducing yourself to strangers. You can use branded clothing. You can use car magnets. Hopefully you've got some leaflets um, printed that you can drop off in local businesses or take to some events with you. You can donate a prize to a gala dinner. So this is what I mean by visibility without you actually having to do that in person. OK, so here's a collection of images here I wanted to share with you. Let's start with the top left hand corner. So pull up banners and leaflets, essential if you're doing workshops or in-person work. We actually persuaded a local gym to have our pull-up banner in their um, gym reception for six months, and they agreed to do so very willingly, and that led to us doing some talks for them as well. So uh, a pull-up banner, over here, it'll cost us about 99 British pounds. I don't know, that's about $150 maybe, if that would be the equivalent over there. Um, but invest in some marketing materials that you can drop off in places. You might go out and meet a friend for lunch in a really nice coffee shop and they've got a business board that they have local businesses pin their information to. Pop yours on there and make sure you go back the following week and see if it's still there. If it isn't, pop another one up. Car magnets. So uh, we can get these over here for sort of less than twenty pounds um, just by using a, a company online, a printer's online called Pronto Print. Um, the magnetic, they don't harm the paint on the car, so you can pull them off when, whenever you want to. Um, just be careful with your driving. We don't want any road rage when you've got your business details on the side of your car. But if you think about it, if you're parking at the local supermarket, how many other people are walking past your vehicle when you're stuck in traffic or you're stuck at traffic lights? How many people just, you know, glance across and have a look at what's on the side of the car? This is like subliminal messaging. You're planting seeds. And we have had inquiries from people that are on the motorway traveling home stuck in traffic and contacted us because they've seen our information on the side of the car. So car magnets are very effective. And also brand your um, clothing. These are just some sweatshirts that we picked up from Marks and Spencers. Um, and we went to a local lady that had an embroidery machine and we had our uh, company name embroidered on the side of our sleeve. Uh, we've got them on some um, hooded sweatshirts as well. We've got a coat that's got Meraki Nutrition embroidered on the back, a nice, cheap and easy way to um, send out some more subliminal messaging. And, you know, imagine you're stood in the supermarket checkout queue and somebody has just happened to glance at the arm of your sleeve and reads, you know, your business name. And then they walk out of the uh, supermarket and the next thing they see is your car with your car magnet. And then they go to a coffee shop and they see a leaflet with your name on this all stacks up planting seeds and people will perceive you as being serious you're a brand you're official you're a business you do what you do and you do it well and then on the bottom right hand corner here uh, when I mentioned um, maybe donating a prize to a gala dinner 
we frequently donate prizes to gala dinners here um, that's just a, a nutrition review. We call it a diet diary review where we just evaluate a seven day food and drink diary. We will ask them what their health goals are. We don't do a big intake form or anything, you know, too serious or too time consuming. It's literally let me see your diary. You want to lose weight. This is the advice I'd give you based on your current diet. So that carries a value of around £120 with, with us over here, that service. So it's not a big deal. It's going to take us maybe a maximum of an hour of our time to do it. However, when you're donating a prize to a gala dinner, you're going to be featured in the gala dinner programme. You're probably going to have your logo up on a big screen on stage when they're pulling the raffle or announcing the winners of the prizes everybody will hear about who you are and that you exist. And that is the point of it. So have a think about some of those ideas in terms of visibility. If you're somebody that hesitates putting themselves out there and putting themselves forward, because these are really good ways for you to reach people. Okay, let's move on. So growing your mailing list. You do not own your followers on social media. And there's a lot of people out there that are hung up on, oh, I've only got 100 followers. Well, first of all, it's quality over quantity. Um, second of all, you only want people following you that are serious about your information and what you do and, and want to move one step closer to working with you. But you could be deplatformed at any time, not because you've done something controversial, but maybe Mark Zuckerberg just decides to retire and just takes the whole thing down. You never know what's going to happen. I've had nutritionists that have had their business accounts hacked and they've lost all of their followers in a millisecond. And that's devastating. So we want to make it a priority to move your followers from Facebook or social media or TikTok, wherever you are, onto your personal mailing list because you do own your mailing list. It's not going anywhere. It's nice and safe. There are many ways that you can grow your mailing list to bring them one step closer. And one of the ways that I recommend is to use lead magnets. Now, if you don't know what a lead magnet is, this is part of the magnetic marketing aspect where we're dangling a carrot in front of them and we're bringing them across to grab some high value information, but we're capturing their email address along the way. I am sure that you have downloaded your fair share of lead magnets yourself where you've had to type in your email address in return for some high value content that you really want. Now talking about lead magnets and high value content, um, on my website, the link will come to you tomorrow, but on my website, there is an article 12 steps to grow your mailing list. And underneath that is a downloadable lead magnet guide that's got lots of ideas for you to create your own lead magnets so that you can uh, build your mailing list. And you can scan the QR code to get straight to that article now if you want to. That's going to take you to that article, 12 ways to grow your mailing list and a guide to lead magnets. Once you have those people on your mailing list, it's very important that you nurture them. Now, even if you've only got two people on your mailing list and one of them's your mom, you must send a newsletter, okay? Because that person, it's almost like you've invited them into your kitchen, you've invited them in for a cup of tea and a brownie, and they're sitting there waiting patiently for you to turn up with that cup of tea and brownie. Like they're tapping their fingers, um, wondering where you are. Um, so even if you've got just one person listed on your mailing list, it's very important that you send your newsletters out. Don't wait until you've got 10, 20 or 50 people on your list before you start doing that. We need to nurture them. They need to hear from you because the fact that they've taken that step to give you their email address means they're giving you permission that they'd like to hear more about what you do. So don't waste that opportunity. And number five, share social proof. So social proof is endorsements. It's what is the world saying about you that's positive? What are people praising you for? Um, so when you're having conversations with clients, even friends and family, you know, those brain pickers that sit at your table at Christmas or birthday events and they say, oh, I've been meaning to ask you what you think of this supplement or what should I do with this symptom or my doctor told me this, what's your opinion? Make down a note of those conversations and use it as 
content because you can go to your social media platforms and say I had a conversation with a lady this week about she asked me this question and I responded with and if you're somebody that's worried about this aspect of your health then you can get in touch I've just bundled in there like a little mini story of this happened and I was able to help them in this way and if you would like help too here's a call to action get in touch with me so sharing social proof on social media can include sharing conversations that you're having with people people. You also need to be confident to ask for testimonials. Now, you don't have to wait to finish working with a client to get a testimonial. You can ask them for feedback while they're working with you, because I'm sure you're asking the question, how are you feeling? How are you getting on? How are those symptoms you've been struggling with? And if you're doing a really great job, which I know you will be, those people are tending to respond with comments like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I feel this good after just two weeks when I've been struggling with this for 10 years. Grab that quote, pop it on a social media post in speech marks anonymously and share that feedback with the world. OK, you don't have to wait for a formal testimonial that says Sarah was really amazing and she really looked after me and I really recommend working with her. Grab the real stuff, you know, the real conversations that are happening because they've got way more clout than a testimonial. And blow your own trumpet. Don't be afraid to blow your own trumpet. And I'm talking about things like humble brags. So by telling people that a client asked me this week, what would be my solution for? That's blowing your own trumpet. What you're saying is, I'm having conversations with people. I'm, you know, I'm out here in the world and I'm helping people and they're coming to me for advice and I'm able to give advice. You may want to say, after a busy week in clinic, um, I'm really delighted to announce that I'm now taking on more clients as of next month. That's a humble brag because you're telling everybody that you're busy and you're in demand and, you know, there's an opportunity here to work with you. So never be afraid to blow your own trumpet and share testimonials, share those quotes, share the conversations that you're having with people. That all adds up to social proof. And I know that your buying behaviours rely on social proof. How many of you go to TripAdvisor or or the reviews on a hotel before you actually book. How many of you um, go to people for help based on word of mouth because somebody said, I saw this person on social media and she's brilliant, you need to follow her, and then they end up going to work with that person. This is how it works. This is the psychology of human beings and their buying behavior and the time it takes to work with you. This is magnetic marketing, okay? So whilst this is all about finding the clients. A lot of what I've talked about today is clients finding you. This isn't a trick. I am going to come on to now where you can actually find clients proactively yourself by using other contexts. So we need to find an audience. There are other practitioners out there that have been practicing for years, like chiropractors, osteopaths, movement coaches, physiotherapists, Reiki practitioners, hypnotherapists, psychologists, so many different wellness practitioners out there that have been seeing patients or clients for years. They've got huge lists on their mailing list and on their database. They're busy. They've got um, a really good reputation. And people are going to them over and over again. You need to make friends with those people. You need to surround yourself with your own personal sales team so that you can get in front of their audience. It's the fastest route to finding clients is to collaborate with other wellness practitioners that are established and respected. So do some research, research on who's in your area. Um, if they're not in your area or if maybe you're in the middle of nowhere. I've been to Nebraska. I know how, how far apart everybody is in some parts of the, of the US. So if you are online and you're not in a busy town with a big footfall, go and find the nearest town and find out who the movers and shakers are in the wellness industry in those towns and reach out to them from email. Organize um, a phone call with them or a Zoom call with them, but make it about them. When you approach these people, you need to be asking about 
their business? You know, uh, what's their process for referrals if you need to send one of your clients their way? Um, you've had a look at their website. You can see they've recently been nominated for award and you want to congratulate them. So make it about them when you're entering into the conversation. That's much nicer than um, any pushy sales vibes. We don't do any pushy sales vibes over here at Meraki Business Coaching. It's all about relationship building. OK, but get your collaborations moving, set up Zoom um, interviews, set up um, live Instagram um, conversations with them. If you're not comfortable with that straight away, contribute an article to their newsletter that they can include that credits you for it and mentions how they can get in touch with you. So there's many different ways to collaborate. If you can get to their clinic, you can deliver um, a workshop to them in person or maybe spend the day there doing a drop in clinic for all of their clients. So while they're waiting for their chiropractor appointment, they can have a 15 minute chat with you about nutrition at the same time. There's lots of overlap there between chiropractors and osteopaths and nutrition because we're all working towards the same thing and that's lowering inflammation and think about the amount of people on painkillers that are seeing a chiropractor and what the state of their gut might be in so you get the gist you know where I'm going with that get your collaboration set up and community talks and workshops who have you got on your doorstep that you need to get to know whilst there are movers and shakers in the wellness industry in your local areas there will be movers and shakers and natural leaders in the community as well people that are organizing um i don't know a, a female business network in the area or an independent business network where all the independent coffee shops and gift shops and craft people come together go and find out who they are find out who's hosting book launches find out who's hosting comedy nights because any type of cafe or um even a wine bar I know that kind of like conflicts with some of the advice we give but we want to reach real people right but find out these venues that are hosting these events on a regular basis and find out if you can go and deliver a talk on a hot topic like menopause is a hot topic gut health is a hot topic weight loss is a really hot topic um, so find out where you can go in the community that's going to get you known and more visible and put you in front of an audience. We've got local radio opportunities. Now, everyone's got a local radio. OK, but do you know if they host a wellness slot or a wellness episode that maybe could be pre-recorded or if you're comfortable doing that live it doesn't have to be you know a really big um radio station that's international it could just be a little local radio station that's keen to collaborate with somebody like yourself and have like a health and wellness slot on a Friday afternoon where you talk about some hot topics or what's maybe in the news at the moment. Um, stay away from the controversial stuff um, is my advice on that and keep it sort of, you know, generic and friendly. But see if you've got a local radio that you can just reach out to and say, hi, I've been listening to you for a while. I don't see that you've got a wellness slot um, as part of your weekly lineup. Would you be interested in having a registered nutritionist like myself come on and talk about some hot topics or um, some common questions around health and wellness? And I'm sure they'll bite your hand off. Um, think of the visibility and also that's a humble brag you put that on your social media and on your website you put that radio station's logo out there that's a humble brag look at me you know I'm on the radio people listen to me because uh, I've got this position of authority where I'm qualified to talk about what I talk about and then corporate wellness. So um, corporate wellness is another way to get yourself in front of an audience. You can charge for your corporate wellness um, opportunities or you can go in and do drop in clinics free of charge, whatever it takes. Find ways to get into the corporate wellness arena. Now, if any of you end up following me on social media or signing up for my mailing list at any point, there's something in the pipeline coming on corporate wellness because it's a beast. It's a big um you know opportunity and, and a lot of nutritionists want to approach it cautiously and don't know what to charge and all that kind of stuff but corporate wellness is definitely a short route to get in front of lots of people that are sedentary lots of people that are sat down snacking all day they're going out for sandwiches and lattes and having lots of meetings doing lots of driving eating from motorway service stations um, so, you know, the corporate world has got lots of people that need your help. OK, so uh, I want to talk to you about funnels. I hate the word funnel. Let's maybe call it a pipeline instead. But I don't like that word funnel. But 
imagine this is your pipeline where you want to bring people a step closer to working with you. It has to start with social media, sharing your website links, collaborating and delivering events. OK, and growing your email list alongside that. So lead magnets or if you're delivering an event in person, you might have a QR code up on your last slide that says download a copy of these slides by scanning the QR code and they have to pop their email address in to get them. So what's at the top of this pipeline up here is something that you need to do over and over and over again. It will feel hard and uncomfortable to begin with until you really start getting used to it and get your vibe. You, you're discovering who you are are when you're doing this stuff you know what your style is but you have to keep doing it to fill up that pipeline you can see that pipeline gets narrower towards the bottom okay now I have a term that I use all the time like are your plates when I'm coaching a nutritionist one-to-one -one, I have to check with them are you spinning all your plates if you're not getting inquiries, has one of your plates dropped to the floor? And I'm sorry, this is a really rubbish image to get the message across, but your brand awareness, your website traffic, your social proof, your social media, collaborations, events and mailing lists, think of them as spinning plates. You cannot let any of them crash to the floor. You've got to keep them moving all the time. Now, I'm not saying that from six o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, you've got to be slogging your guts out. Find smart ways to achieve all of this. This. maybe start batch creating your social media one day a week so you don't have to think about it for the other six days um maybe uh make a deal with yourself that you're going to send a newsletter fortnightly as opposed to um weekly um make a target of you're going to do one collaboration event a month and have a planner up on your wall of the year ahead and put stickers on it that shows that you've got those lined up and keep looking three to six to nine months ahead so you're always looking forward okay but keep those plates spinning because if you keep those plates spinning it's going to lead to discovery calls and you need to be prepared to handle discovery call. There's no point having an influx of discovery calls and then you're not converting them into paying clients. And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute because I have something for you that's my proven method on discovery calls that's going to absolutely ensure that you convert those into paying clients. So once people find you on social media, they know you exist, they've seen you about town, they've seen your name banded around, then they've signed up for a high value piece of content. They're on your mailing list. They love what you're talking about in your newsletters. You're coming across as friendly and authentic. Then they take the plunge. It just takes one moment where they go, do you know what? I'm just going to speak to her. I'm going to book a chat. So they book a discovery call and then you onboard the client and then you get a testimonial or some positive social proof to share. And then you go straight back up to the top and start again. Social media, website shares, events and collabs, that has to keep ticking over so that we can pull these clients through your pipeline so we can get testimonials that you can go and share at the end of their journey. So I'm coming to the end now of my training on uh, where are the clients. So a quick recap work on your mindset. Very, very important. If you've got niggles about being visible and being authentic and being true to yourself and putting yourself forward and sharing content, this isn't going to work. So disregard any negativity, like throw that coat off and drop it on the floor and move forward. Because when it comes down to it, you have paid a lot of money for your qualification. You've spent a lot of time on it. If you're serious about making a successful income being a nutritionist, and it's absolutely possible to do so, then you have to have your mindset in order. Make sure you spin your plates. Don't let any drop to the floor. Keep going. OK, even if you think, gosh, this isn't working, it all of a sudden it's going to change. It will take off. But people need to see that you're consistent. They need to trust you. They need to rely on you. Fill up your funnel and convert your discovery calls. Share your social proof and then go back and repeat that list and work on your mindset. And you will go from strength to strength if you follow all of those points. Now, discovery calls. I have a proven method to convert discovery calls where you let the client do most of the talking. And I recently did a webinar, a live webinar, coaching webinar on discovery call training. You are more than welcome to go and watch that replay. It is a coaching replay. You'll see that there's a bunch of UK nutritionists in there. Um, and, you know, go and watch it because the next step, what leads on from finding clients is the discovery call um, and how you handle that and, and making sure that they onboard with you. So that's 
everything from me. You are more than welcome to ask me any questions. Um, you can type them in the chat um, or maybe Amy will let you ask them live. I don't know how that works for you guys, but I'm here to ask, answer questions. But before I do so, over to Lucia, who's got a couple of slides that she wants to talk to you about. Lucia, you need to tell me next slide, please, when you're ready. Because okay, before I was trying to make moves like that, but maybe, yeah, that wasn't really clear. And uh, yeah, well, well, thank you very much, Karen. As um, usual, it's an it was an amazing masterclass. So many information is absolutely so useful to um, bring the practice to the next level. And I also want to thank everybody who's been here today and um, uh, to join us as Nutrition Collective. Um, and I also want to invite you guys to join our newsletter to stay up to date with uh, different events we're doing. We're doing both events related to business development, uh, like the one we had today with Karen, but also events on uh, education. And if you sign up on our newsletter, we're happy to get you a free masterclass recording on intermittent fasting with Dr. Will Cole, just for you to understand uh, the kind of education we do provide and just scan that QR code for more information and next slide that it's an exciting one our next slide is this big event yes we're really proud because on the 30th of November we're having this virtual hormone conference so you don't need to be in the UK and we're having Dr. Kerry Jones Patrick Holford and Dr. Gazala Z. Scott uh, talking about hormones and it would be a total body scan we're gonna talk from uh, sex hormones to insulin and metabolism to hp axis it would be a day full of education and knowledge and it's online and you will have then a whole month to watch the recording so even if you're in a different time zone from the uk you will have your time information would be a lot so it's always good to Watch it bit by bit. And again, please feel free to scan the QR code for further information on that. And that's all from my side. And thank you very much again. And also thank you very much again to the ANA and to you, Amy, for having us here today. It's been uh, a pleasure. That was great. Thank you both. Um, Karen, we have one question so far and anyone else who would like to add one or if you would like me to unmute you, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, but Hannah's asking, how often do you recommend posting on social media? Okay, well, um, hi, Hannah. Um, there are, in the US, there are 161.7 million Instagram users. So social media, I would lean more towards Instagram than any other platform. Um, and contrary to what people think, you don't need to be posting twice a day every day to reach people. Your algorithm on Instagram, for example, is very much navigated by how often you open the app and how much you engage with other accounts. So this comes down to not just posting your own content on social media, but also liking and commenting on other people's content also. Um, but I would say don't set yourself up for burnouts and aim to post every day, maybe every other day as you're just starting out. A very clever way to master the art of using Instagram is to get yourself to a point where you've got enough content on your page that you can then repurpose that content over and over again in a different style, different colors. Maybe you could take a post that you did three months ago, but turn it into a video instead. Maybe you can take a post that you did uh, six months ago go and turn it into a carousel but the message is there still the same um so don't burn yourself out um fighting to post on social media every day it's not necessary for you to come up as a suggested account to follow you need to be engaging with ordinary people so there's a little bit of stalking necessary a little bit of research to be done on instagram a little bit of browsing around have a look at um some of the people that are following other accounts so so if you're, for example, aware of a chiropractor in your area that's got a really big following, that's mostly patients, you can tell that they're ordinary people, go and give them a follow and they'll, they'll you'll get their head turning, you know, you'll get their attention. They'll be like, oh, OK, that's interesting. And if your next post happens to be about pain management and reducing inflammation or the impact of painkillers on gut health, then boom, you've got somebody that's uh, that's interested in what you've got to say. I hope I answered that thoroughly. I can't believe you've got 26 
six participants and there's only one question over here they go bonkers for the question <laughs> hey, hey i'm actually hannah's raised her hand so i'm gonna unmute her um okay hannah you should be able to unmute okay hi um oh. i wanted to follow up question on that as far as the Instagram posts, um, do you recommend doing a mixture of reels and stories and um, photo posts as well? Um, does it matter if I gravitate towards any one or should I get a good mixture of all, all of those? I think that doing a good mixture of all of those is definitely beneficial because um, I don't know about you, Hannah, but I'm very much a story watcher as opposed to a feed scroller. And people tend to lean one way or the other. Some people like just scrolling through their feed until they get bored. Some people just tap on the stories and just watch all the stories that appear across the top. Um, so you need to cater for those needs. So reels have been proven to reach way more people than just a static grid post would. Um, and there's some clever methods that you can use there by picking up some um, suggested background music for your reels, um, putting some tags and some comments onto your reels. So you will figure it out as you go along what works and what doesn't. You need to be paying attention. So have a look at the insights on your Instagram account. I don't know how often you go in and have a look at that, but it will tell you how many times your content's been forwarded, how many times it's been bookmarked and saved and which ones are gaining the most reach and then what percentage are your followers and what percentage aren't your followers um, on stories you have the benefit of seeing who's watching your story and how they found you did they find you through the discovery page on Instagram where Instagram put your account forward and said you know Hannah's posting some good content that you're probably going to enjoy give her a follow like we need to know that stuff as business managers we want to know what's working or what's not working and lean into what is working so I would try a variety and just understand that not everybody watches stories, not everybody does this the feed scrolling. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. And then cool. is it okay to use similar content and just post like if I do a reel, then repost it as a story and then also try and like have the same similar content and just post up? Absolutely. Or should I try and get unique content for each? No, I would definitely share them, um, you know, across both sides. So if I do a grid post, I will always send that post up to my story to draw attention to the story watchers that there's a grid post that might interest them. Um, if I do a reel, I'll do the same. I'll post that reel into my stories as well. So I'm always feeding both channels. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Hannah. Stephanie had a question. She said, I struggle with keeping up with social media, both client attraction and nurturing my current list. Do you have any thoughts on the amount of time per week to devote to this part of business and any opinions on the pros and cons of hiring a virtual assistant to help with this? OK, uh, well, I've never hired or felt the need to hire a virtual assistant, um, but I can understand why some people might do if they've got maybe a full time job that they're also working on whilst they're building their practice. <laughs> but you can absolutely build your business yourself without having to risk any burnout. And you just need to kind of look at your seven day diary. And uh, I mean, I know nothing about you, Stephanie, you might have, um, you know, a handful of young children and, uh, you know, a husband and a busy job, and you might have some hobbies that you're dedicated to. But if you look at your seven day and um, block out when you're definitely not available. So if you're on a school run, you're definitely not available, okay? If you're at a full-time job between nine and five, Monday to Thursday, you're not available. And then have a look at what you have got available and be realistic and think to yourself, can I set aside a power hour on a Saturday morning between eight and nine where I'm just head down, putting a timer on your phone is a really good tip because as soon as that clock's ticking, you're like, right, okay, I've got to get this job done. 
um, and set aside blocks of time for you to be productive and, and call them power hours and let people know that you're not available during that time. If you need to put yourself in an office, put do not disturb sign up on your door um, share with your husband or your partner or your family that you live with that that is your schedule and you are working because let's face it, if you get paying clients, you are going to have to set aside that time for the consultation. So why not start now and get yourself into a routine where on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday morning or a Thursday Thursday morning that is your time at your desk where you're dedicated to producing content and working your way through a list have lists and cross stuff on because you need to feel like you're not fighting fire that you're actually achieving things okay I hope I answered that for you or helped you're welcome all right any other questions Yeah, you're right. We were expecting all kinds of questions. You must have done a wonderful job of answering all their questions in the presentation. Thank you. Or maybe they're all asleep. <laughs> no, I doubt that. So as Karen mentioned, I'll send out the uh, links tomorrow with the recording. So if you've missed any of the QR codes, we'll make sure you get the links to those. And we'll give it just another second. They said, not at all. They're not sleeping at all, Karen. It was a great <laughs> webinar. Thank you so much. All right. I just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. All right. Anything else that you want to add about Nutrition Collective or anything? No, that just, want well, I want to thank everybody and also kind of reiterate thanks to you Amy and to Karen that it's amazing as usual and I just want to invite everybody to check out all our events because we're doing two events per month and you know we despite being based in uh, in the UK uh, we just uh, are open to everybody worldwide and you know I also hope to see all of you again soon that's it and thank you very much to everybody. Thank, thank you so much. You. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for spending your evening with us. And like I said, the CE survey was in the chat in case anybody missed it. And I will send out the recording and the links tomorrow. Thank you thank both. You. Thank you everyone for attending. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.